So this is from Caroline, uh, again on this issue of social media. <clears throat> and Caroline writes, with social media, notions of privacy and interaction have shifted for younger generations. What do you think the larger implications are for this emerging social trend? How will this change how people think of relationships in the future? That's a great question. Relationships are fascinating from a historical perspective. Ben's already alluded to this because they really respond to the times and they are a reflection of the times that we find ourselves in. And part of the current flow of relationships and how we think about relationships has to be understood within the context of uh, the institutions that have long supported intimacy in, uh, in Western societies. Uh, we have a colleague, Andrew Cherlin, at uh, Johns Hopkins University. He's a sociologist, and he's written recently about this idea of the deinstitutionalization of relationships, the idea being, for example, that there are um, uh, there is a great retreat in the the number of people who are getting married in the United States. So many people cohabit, live together without getting married. Uh, so our, our relationships aren't as linked into institutions as they once were. We're seeing this with uh, greater uh, societal recognition of gay and lesbian relationships, for example. Uh, they're not necessarily tied or constrained by the institutions. In fact, they're starting to redefine the very institutions. Um, that, uh, that they seek to be part of. Uh, we know that there are many relationships where there are single mothers raising children and fathers come into the picture as that, uh, as that is possible and desired by the partners themselves. So there are lots of different varieties of relationships now and there are many different changes that are happening. And so when we think about this question that Caroline asks about um, how changes in social media uh, what, what are the implications of changing social media for our social relationships? We have to see that our relationships are, um, uh, are fluctuating, they're changing. The surrounding uh, environment of our relationships is really different from what it once was. And I think it's, um, personally I'm a little concerned um, when I think about um, social media and relationships because I think it can um, really enable a lot of disclosure um, and not only disclosure from me to other people who I may not know that well, but my partner then having access to those disclosures. Mm -hmm. And it's not, um, communication is um, in relationships is really a product of knowing that person well and having a shared history of that communication. and feeling excited about developing that shared history. And um, I'm a little worried that um, sort of the easy access and the appearance of connection without some greater depth to it may, in the end, leave people feeling a little cut off from people. Uh, paradoxically, you would think that, um, you know, as people are more and more connected to more and more people that they would feel part of a network. And I think in some respects they do. but. I think there's also a possible um, backlash in the feeling that people might have lots of friends, but no one who really understands them, no one who they can really turn to. And I, and I, I think what, what I would say, having studied couples now for 20 years and really thought hard about what happens in couples' conversations is um, it's important to preserve the special character of relationships and to recognize that um, social media and the implications that has for our relationships takes us down a potentially different pathway. Uh, and maybe we're only starting to, beginning, starting to begin to understand the ramifications of that. But I think it has great potential for connecting people at a superficial level and um, distracting us from the possibility that there's a deeper level that we can really pursue. Well, this is, this is fun because I, I think with all tremendous respect and admiration for you, <laughs> I probably have a different viewpoint. Huh. And uh, I'll just offer it, and people can uh, do with it what they will. But I, I might argue that the new technologies are mostly uh, superficial changes, and that the nature of intimacy and the complaints that people have about, boy, I know a lot of people, I'm alone in a crowd, are actually pretty old. In fact, I think there's, the book, there's a book called Alone in a Crowd that's like 50 years mm -hmm. old. Mm -hmm. So people were talking about this feeling of being surrounded by connections yeah. and yet not connecting. Yeah. That's not new. Mm -hmm. Facebook didn't invent that. Twitter didn't invent that. Yeah. So what's, what's new is that 
uh, 15 years ago, you know, when I was first dating my wife, if we weren't physically in the room, there was not an expectation that she could push a couple buttons and talk to me. Yeah. So the, the expectations of access have changed. Absolutely, they've changed. But what we want from that access, I don't know. I, I feel like it's something pretty constant. You know, we want, as one of our questioners asked earlier, we want validation. We want responsiveness. We want someone who understands us. And that's still true. And what it takes to get that is still hard. It's still a lot. And so I, uh, I might say that the fundamental nature of intimacy and the challenges associated with maintaining intimacy over time, I don't think they've changed much. What's changed is that uh, we now have, it's easier for us to communicate quicker and uh, always, 24 hours a day. Yeah. So if we have a good communication, then we are, there's more ways to communicate well. If we got a bad communication, well, there's more ways to communicate poorly. So maybe it's, it speeds up the relationship or it's, it speeds up the development of whatever's going to happen. But the phenomenon, ultimately, my sense is it's pretty constant. I agree, and I didn't mean to convey that intimacy as a phenomenon had changed. I, I hope I didn't convey that because I don't believe that that's true. Um, in fact, I believe that it's going to be more important than ever. Uh, I totally um, agree. Because um, the opportunity, and here's why. I think if you're um, maybe a 15, 18 year old now and um, you do have this ease of access to lots of different people, uh, your entire social network really on your cell phone Amazing. at any point in time, uh, and really knowing what they're doing and knowing where they are. Um, but my concern is that that will, that will come to be the standard for what it means to have a relationship. And that's my concern. That there's the that that, that could become uh, a new accepted norm, and really cut us off from a deeper level of connection, the exact kind of intimacy that you're talking about. That I think is uh, deeply um, bred into us as human beings. That that has evolved over time to really allow us to connect in, to one another and to take care of one another and to take care of uh, to infants and, and children as they grow up. Um, that we would somehow lose track of that. And uh, so my concern is not so much, like you're saying, the, the, how uh, social media might drop into your relationship now that you've been married 15 or 20 years, but what it means for a developing generation of 16-year-olds, 18-year-olds, 20-year-olds who say, what do you mean? I've got 500 friends on Facebook. Don't, shouldn't I, f like I've got enough relationships. Yeah. There's another kind of relationship that, um, you know, I, I would want people to know is out there and is available and is very, very powerful. And that they not only realize that, because I think they must realize that, the nature of intimacy and love ensures that that's the case, but that they know how to handle it. That they know that when that comes down the pipeline, they can say, oh, I've, I've had a conversation with my older brother or my parents or uh, you know, a trusted friend. And I know now I, I have someone I can talk to. Is this is this a special person to me? Like now I've got someone who I can really bounce ideas off and I can deepen my connection with this other person. So I think my concern is that if it becomes um, viewed as a new standard or as a new alternative that distracts us from all that intimacy and close human connection has in store, that I think that sets us on a difficult path. Certainly, we'll find out one way or another. <laughs> or uh, at know, least our kids will. Our kids will. Uh, and on that topic, I. I'm not sure how relevant this is, but I saw a cartoon that was uh, seems relevant to this. And the, the, it was a cartoon, The New Yorker, and it's a um, a mother and her child have clearly gone up to the attic and they've unpacked some old books. And the mother there's, and the child are sitting next to each other, and she's pulled out a book and she's looking over, and there's visible joy on her face, and it's you can see the label in the book. It says My Diary, and uh, and the mother's clearly just overwhelmed with nostalgia. She's going through her diary, and the, the, her daughter is looking up at her very unimpressed, and she says, well, what's the point of having a diary if no one's going to read it? <laughs> because for the daughter, uh, diaries are things you write in public. They're, they're weblogs, they're blogs. Yeah. Uh, and the implications of that are still to be known. Yep, I think so. Well, that is the last question we have. Uh, it's been a pleasure responding to these questions. Absolutely. Mm -hmm.